Hello and welcome back to Raze Gaming and Diablo 4. With the upcoming Abattoir of Zir event, the Blood Forges are coming to the game. A final challenge for the Season of Blood, and very likely a new format of content for the game as a whole. The last month of every season was some kind of next level pinnacle challenge, harder than everything else in the game, meant for the players who have basically completed the season up until that point. Meaning you're level 100, you got a complete build or multiple that's suited to the format of the challenge, maybe even some uber uniques. Personally, I think this is a good idea, but the actual implementation of the event is very important. I think we should be a bit forgiving with whatever goes on with the Blood Forges, since it's their first attempt at something like this. But based on what we've heard about them, I am still convinced that it's going to create some kind of drama or upset. So let's talk about what we know, what that might mean, our thoughts about it, and why there might be drama. The basics of the Blood Forges are pretty straightforward. Endgame Pinnacle Dungeon Event, in which you go into a Blood Forge, a new type of dungeon. Within the Forge, you've got to kill enough enemies within 10 minutes to spawn a mini boss. Basically, you fill a progress bar, spawns the boss, you kill it, and you do that within the timer to succeed. Beyond that, there's going to be 25 levels of difficulty to the event. So, to begin with, you craft sigils, much like crafting a Nightmare Dungeon sigil. So, you're crafting a Blood Forge sigil, and they're going to be noticeably expensive. In the short clip we have, we see that this one costs 800. 100 sigil powder to craft just a tier 1. The forges go all the way up to tier 25 though, so that expense might go up higher too, which is pretty damn expensive, and might even be a breaking point for your day 1 progression in the forges. What if you can only craft 3 or even 4 before you're totally out of powder? That would suck, but hopefully they provide us with powder through the event. It would be a way for them to time gate our progression, obviously, but something tells me they're not going to do that, and that's because of the alleged difficulty of the forges. Apparently, we're talking about something significantly harder than anything else in the game. Tier 100 Nightmare Dungeons should feel similar to a Tier 1 Blood Forge, but a Tier 25 Blood Forge, that's going to be insane. In fact, it's alleged to be so hard that it's potentially impossible, even for, say, Ball Lightning Sorcerers and Hammer of the Ancients Barbs. This information came about because a few different creators were able to play a test version of the Abattoir. This happened at BlizzCon, and most notably, Woodyjo, one of the top creators of the game and a high contender in the races to World First 100 every season, well, he was able to play, and he's someone I definitely trust with opinions about things like this. Now, he said, to his understanding, we are not meant to be able to finish the last tier of the Blood Forges, which is quite a controversial claim. Name, but what does it really mean? Are we not going to be able to beat a tier 25 even if you play perfectly? Even if you have not only the perfect build but beyond with uber uniques? If that's true and it's still impossible even with ubers and all that, is this actually a good thing? Should it really be that hard? Well, we're not going to know for sure until we get our hands on it, but it is an interesting topic to consider. Is it good for the game to have something that's next to or literally impossible? Uber Lilith used to be a real challenge. She had interesting but brutally unforgiving mechanics. If you were hit by basically any attack, you're dead. And that's still the case with some of the mechanics, like the blood waves or the blister missiles, but not every mechanic now. So she's much easier to defeat, but still a fun challenge requiring good gameplay under normal circumstances. But the thing is, we're not under normal circumstances. We are crushing her with our max builds to such a point that we skip main mechanics by forcing her into her next phase before she can even do anything. Is that too far? Well, it's hard to say because it's also really fun to do. I just wouldn't say the boss itself was out of reach for players and actually defeating her in her old state. It's just that it used to be a lot harder to reach level 100. And now because there's way more level 100s, more people are able to take her on. But with the fact that they also nerfed her, a lot more people are beating her in this kind of dominating DPS way. Is that bad? Honestly, I don't think so. It's fun to do, and more people having fun is a good thing for the game. But then there's also no real endgame challenge right now. So the Blood Forges seem to be their way to tackle that issue by introducing something really hard. What's interesting about that is that you can challenge it to your personal level. Maybe you reach tier 11, and that's where it gets really hard for you. So you spend some time working out your build, making some changes, pushing and getting better. Eventually you clear it and now you can do a tier 12. You get that personal challenge, you get the sense of accomplishment for beating a tier, all in a kind of way that works for you at a difficulty level that works for you rather than just one boss, this is how hard it is. It's all set in reasonably timed events. It should be 10 minutes to clear or less, right? So I think that format's good, but it's the question of have they gone too far on the difficulty scaling to the higher tiers? And there's definitely an elephant in the room here. What if to beat the higher or even highest tiers of the forges requires not just one, 
but multiple uber uniques in your build. There's a popular concept happening right now in which players are making builds using the uber unique amulet Selix. The amulet turns your resources into damage reduction, in which when you take damage, your resource will be drained instead of your health. Through that basis, you can create high resource gen builds that essentially mitigate massive amounts of damage, and so it's looking to be a very important item in those higher tiers where you might not survive otherwise. Is that not really bad? Like a 1% drop or actually less if you consider the amount of ubers you might get being required for certain gameplay. The pinnacle challenge for the season is meant to be very hard, but having to kill 400 durials like I did before I got my Selig's is that really good for the game? Is that fun? I absolutely think no is the 100% answer. I would never have farmed Duriel as much as I have this season if not for one, the upcoming Blood Forges that are happening right, but two, the main fact is that I'm a YouTuber and I'm covering the event. If I was a normal player, there is no way I would have done that much brainless, mind-numbing amount of grinding to get those Ubers. It is not fun. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe you guys are farming them, maybe you're enjoying them, but personally, I still want them to be more common because I don't want to do 400 durials every season. That will be terrible. But yeah, if you need Ubers to beat the event, I do think that's going to be an issue with some people in the community, and I think that's understandable. Either way, there are some other details to be aware of if you're going to try the Blood Forgers. Firstly, you're going to have to have completed the final chapter in the season journey, which, yeah, it does mean it's that last chapter that has either lots of PvP to do, which is bad if you're not the right class and build because it's not balanced in any way, or, hey, level 18 in the Blood Harvest events, which is also a massive grind for little relevant reward after a certain point, so I do think that needs re balancing as well if they do anything like that in the future. But the other requirements there are all pretty reasonable like beat Uber Lilith once, clear a tier 90 I think, kill 12 world bosses and so on, very attainable. Once you've done all that though you can get a recipe to craft your first Blood Forge sigil for tier 1. When we go in and beat that we'll be given the new Paragon Glyph if you've not got it yet. This is the new glyph, the Tears of Blood, and it looks to be the most powerful glyph for every class. It's a unique glyph that's going to be removed from the game after season 2 so it's clearly meant to be busted. What it does is it increases your total damage by 2% times for every 5 core sat purchased within its range. The amount of damage potential there is ridiculous. It also grants a 50% bonus to all rare nodes within its range, increasing those bonuses as you level the glyph itself. The radius increases with level 50 on the glyph though, which is a huge requirement compared to 21. It starts with a radius of 4 though, and can go up then to 5, so it's going to be a very wide reaching glyph. Basically, this glyph is very much likely to be how we push our damage high enough to actually challenge the massive health enemies in the higher forges. Allegedly, we can level it up to about 200 times times, which is insane. But either way, that glyph is going to change the game so hard that I think it's going to make everything outside of the forges a complete joke, like you'll roll over it. By beating the Blood Forges though, you'll get the Glyph, and you'll also get a recipe to craft the next tier, so if you beat a 1, you'll get a 2, if you beat a 2, you get a 3, and so on. And you'll also get these new things, Uber Nightmare Dungeon Upgrade Totems. What a useless set of words that I have just had to say. We're going to call them totems, and these totems provide you with a lot of glyph XP, basically. So that's what we'll use to power up the new glyph. But yeah, that's the main stuff I wanted to talk about with the Blood Forges and the event. The concept is great, a new pinnacle challenge, since we are lacking one in Season 2. A new glyph that's going to make us so powerful that everything outside of the Blood Forges is going to be very easy. And it's going to be a challenge that's meant to be so hard that it might even be impossible to beat. If so, you're definitely going to need uber uniques, let alone a complete build in level 100. We're going to have to wait and see to actually find out how far they've gone with these requirements and if they've balanced it right. We do have insane power in season two and it's only going to get more nutty with that new glyph. To me, I'm expecting them to have balanced this wrong and for people to be upset. It's either going to be way easier than they expected or too hard that a lot of people will be mad. Still, I appreciate them adding it and trying it, adding new life to the end of a season where it is normally dead. It might suck to grind ubers but it does give you a reason to do that since you don't need ubers to dominate everything in the game currently. But yeah, what do you guys think about all this? Let us know in the comments. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thank you for watching, we'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice, to reiterate that it is nice, to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is uh, goodbye.